What's up everybody? So we're back here again with some more Trial of Ascension stuff. I wanted to do just the 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90 boss. I already did a guide on the boss up at floor 100. So we're going to do 50 through 90, just the boss stages because a lot of people have been stuck on them. And hopefully you guys can see what kind of power these farmable teams really have. I'm going to try to use the same farmable team. I'm going to speed it up. And that's because I don't really want to spend 40 minutes on one video uh, because a lot of people will just not really, they'll get bored of it. So we're going to speed it up and then when I get to the actual boss stage, I'll go ahead and slow it down and then it, describe basically what you want to do and then we will discuss everything and I'll change the team accordingly to those different boss fights. And I'll discuss before we start the boss fight just so you know what to exactly you want to bring. So first up we have Sierra stage 50 basically it's going to be four different bombers with sierra we have to be extremely careful and this is why because as soon as those bombs go off or as soon as she gets a turn to start those bombs we are going to be absolutely screwed because those bombs will do enough damage to kill our monsters so what we're going to do is we're going to bring some form of stun or buff removal uh, debuff removal which is Veramos. we're going to have our healer belladion and we're going to have some type of stuns now i'm going to go ahead and take Beretta out of there. We don't want Beretta. We're going to want some form of nuke. The way I get through the stage is I just absolutely annihilate Sierra and I try to keep everyone else stunned or slowed down and whatnot. You just want to go straight for Sierra. So let's go ahead and get through this. Okay, so here we are at the boss stage. Now, one thing you'll notice is that she is actually pretty dang fast. She starts out with these two, and this actual passive, or whatever you want to call it, for each boss means that her cooldown times are a lot smaller. So she will drop this off really fast, so that's why we do not want to give her a turn. But being a natural 5-star attack-based monster in Trial of Ascension on such a low floor, she's pretty weak, so we're just going to buff up try to apply that to everyone we didn't get that on Liebly, but we're gonna ignore him for now we should be able to remove those bombs if we actually get him to uh, apply those bombs we're gonna apply our defense break that is a must and we are just going to straight up nuke sierra let's put on that attack break now we're gonna just keep assaulting remove those bombs stun all right and now bombs up again if as long as we have one bomb at a time we are okay veramos will go ahead and remove those bombs we have to be careful because if Sierra applies her bombs, we're going to want to uh, heal up. That's why we bring Bella Dion. We also have the attack break and all that stuff. We're going to save Theomar's attack break. If you don't have Theomar's, you can use any nuker here. And you just want to go straight for Sierra. Straight for the money. We have no time to play. Just get that bitch out of the way and clear the floor. So next up we have the occult girls now this one i'm gonna have to venture off from a farmable team now you're gonna have to realize that i just don't have a farmable fire monster built up but i will show you exactly what you want to do so first off you're gonna definitely need some hp leader skill you're gonna be, have to be really careful just be careful with the light imp there's a light imp and a wind imp and then the light a cool girl and then the wind a cool girl the wind one is not so scary the light one can be pretty terrifying with so many stuns and the uh, decrease the attack power especially if you're nuking now the light imp ignores defense that's really 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 bad for us so we're gonna have to be really careful with that we're gonna bring the typical typical buff and debuff team here and then lastly i'm gonna go ahead and put on hua that's the only fire damage i have i would not suggest using theomars because theomars is a water monster there is a wind imp and a wind of cold girl you're gonna have to be really careful i could probably use him but you guys would probably have trouble with it if you're struggling on the stage. Bringing a water nuker is not going to make it any better. So try to find some form of fire attacker. And once you can do that, then you can start doing the stage. And of course, we're going to top it off with a healer and defense break. And then we are ready to get through this stage. Let's get to it.
All right, so here we are at the Occult Girls. These ones are actually pretty tough. If you're not careful, they can really do some damage. If you're on Trial of Ascension hard, you're probably going to have a little bit more difficulty. I would not bring a Nuker if you're on Trial of Ascension hard. This is for normal. If you're still struggling and you can't seem to keep your Nuker alive, bring Beretta and try to bring some form of revive. The team that I used for Trial of Ascension hard involved Beretta, Briand, Chisun, Verda Hill, and then some other form of buffer I cannot remember at the moment. I believe I used Veramos as well, but the main concept is you're going to want to keep the debuffs on everyone, and you're going to want to try to stun that left imp. That is perfect. Now we want to get rid of that left imp as fast as possible. The slower method is by using dots. faster method is just by straight up nuking. Now we're going to try to put on that attack break. We didn't land it. That's okay. We're just going to keep trying to get that, that left imp out of the way. We do not want that left imp. That one will one-shot our monster, and if we don't have a healer or a reviver, it's going to be really, really tough. So next, we're going to just go ahead and start targeting the light occult girl. The wind imp is not a big deal because we do not have any water monsters. You should not bring any water monsters unless you absolutely need to. And then if that's the case, then you really need to take out that left imp as well. And be careful with that wind occult girl. Next up is Julianne, which is the Light Vamp, and it's going to be accompanied by two Light Archangels. Now this one is actually rather easy, you just have to be careful with the counter attack, so I do not recommend bringing stuff like Vertihill, especially if you're having trouble keeping alive. This one is pretty weak on the damage, there's really no damage. So, since it's so light heavy, you can bring a Dark Tank if you really are struggling, but the basically the main concept is to just bring a Nuke, some form of sustainable healer, our buff and debuff combo, which is always, always you. And then we're going to go ahead and bring some other monster to CC. And I love to use Veramos. We do not need Veramos, but I don't really have any other farmable monsters I would really use in this place. If you want to use Beretta, you can use Beretta as well. But you really don't need to because the Light Archangels are not that tough. They don't hit that hard. And this team is actually pretty uh, sustainable, especially because Belladion is going to be healing pretty nicely. Another great monster you could add in is Mav. Mav is absolutely a beauty. The Wind Penguin is so good. It's basically a better version of Bernard. It does not increase the attack bar, but it does increase the speed and it also decreases skill cooldown time by one turn for everyone. This is so crucial. He also packs in Provoke and Stun, which is always good to bring. So if you want to bring in some more tactical monster, Mav, the Wind Penguin, will definitely help, but he's mostly Trial of Ascension hard, but this is in case you are actually struggling and need to use stuns, provoke, and freeze, and all of that stuff. So, now that we've got our team, let's get into the stage. Alright, so here we are at the boss stage. Now, you'll notice that the two Artamiels on the left and right are going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt when you do hit crit. Now, Theo Mars is at 100% crit, and that is really going to be annoying for me. But, as long as we keep them in check, uh, they should not be a problem. We're going to go ahead and apply the debuff, stun them if we can. Now, they don't hit for that much, so you don't need to worry too much. It's nice that the vamp actually does add the glancing hit so it doesn't have the artamiels attack that much veramos will go ahead and soak up the damage from all of the light monsters i'm going to go ahead and just ignore the artamiels for now we should be able to outdo the damage right now but it they will probably heal here and there you just got to be careful they don't do that much damage stun them if you can i don't think i will get the stun right here and then they're going to heal that's not a big deal just keep going going if you need to, you can go ahead and take out the Artamiels. 
I don't really feel like it taking him out because I don't do that much damage, but we are going to go ahead and try to go straight for the boss. Next up is floor 80. Now this one is a little bit of a toughie because Ashabel actually casts two turn sleep, which can be quite terrifying, especially because Veramos does not remove inability effects, which means Veramos will not remove these sleep effects. So no, Veramos will not help you. If you have some kind of cleanser like Konamaya, I don't, then you can use Konamaya to clear them as long as Konamaya has will runes or something to keep it from getting put to sleep. If you have immunity, like Chloe, or Delphoi, or any of those types of monsters, that will work very, very, very nicely. I'm going to try to do without that, but I highly recommend you use some form of immunity. You do not need it if you know how to play your cards right. So basically, the strategy we're going to use is, of course, we're going to do some form of nuke. We're going to have to be careful because there's a water and a dark monster. So we're going to have someone absorb the water damage, Spectra. And we're going to have someone absorb the dark damage, which is going to be Bella. Now there's a lot of dots, so we're going to use Veramos to remove those dots, and then we're going to use Bernard to make sure we increase the speed. Now, again, there's a pattern here. You're seeing a pattern, right? I'm using literally almost the exact same team for every single boss. And they're all farmable, mostly, except for the Occult Girl stage. If you have a Fire Nuker, then that is farmable, then it is useful. But... I don't have a fire uh, farmable nuker, which is why I brought Wa. But again, the pattern, it's basically Spectra, Bernard combo, very, very nice. If I had any form of stun that was not Veramos and was still farmable, I would bring that, but I don't have that. So we're using Veramos for our stuns and for dots. And it does a pretty decent amount of damage because my stats on crit damage are pretty nice. It's around 100% and there's no crit damage on slot 4 or anything like that. It's just from substats. I don't know why I get, you know, awful crit damage substats like that. But it's pretty nice. And then we just bring some form of nuke just to make sure that we take things down. We can use Beretta here, but it takes a lot longer. And I'm trying to do this really quickly. So you can use Beretta here. I would suggest using that as a speed lead skill, especially if you're going to be using Bernard Spectre combo. Because the whole point of using Spectre and Bernard is to steal turns. One increases the speed and the other decreases the speed. And that's very, very important because we should get around two to three turns before they get a turn. And that will ensure that we get all of our uh, skills cooled down and ready to use before they start applying any serious damage. So now that we're ready and we've got our team, again, same team, we're going to go ahead and get to the boss. So here we are at the boss. What's going to be very, very useful for us is Belladion's second skill, Seize, which is going to allow us to remove any buffs that Megan puts on for the boss. We don't need to be concerned about all of the other extra mobs on the side, but we will need to be concerned about Ashabel, the boss, because that second turn can be quite frightening. The two turn sleep can really hurt you, especially if Megan spends all her time buffing and then the dark. Grim Reapers don't actually do anything or do any AoE attacks to do actual damage which will awake you and they can put on dots which actually don't do any damage so you'll still be asleep. So that's why we have Veramos. We're going to use some kind of speed team. We're going to try to make sure that they get minimal turns and we're going to go straight to nuking the boss. If you're using Beretta, you're going to want to at least keep the Grim Reapers down. Now Megan will be a little bit annoying. But as long as you can keep removing the attack power off of the boss, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. But what does most of the damage is actually the Grim Reapers. The Grim Reapers will actually hurt you with their dots and their stuns. So that's a problem. That's what you want to keep down. So let's go ahead and finish the boss.
And last but not least, Floor 90. This one's a little bit of a toughie, especially if you don't have CC. Now, Kraka is basically the same concept as Sierra. It's going to be one Nuker-based monster. Now, this is a Reviver, but as long as you keep the other monsters on the side downed, like those Jokers, then you should not have a problem at all. It's just mainly Kraka. Kraka does not have that much HP as well, so we should be able to just nuke her down really fast. So we're going to use the same team. We're going to put on Theo. We're going to put on Spectra, Veramos, Bernard, and Belladion. The Dream Team, Farmable Dream Team for Trial of Ascension, normal version, and we're just going to go straight to the boss. So here we are at the boss, it's actually Dark Infernos, so the reason we really want to keep those stun locked is because they have AoE defense break, you have to be really careful, they will blow up on you if you do any damage to you, this is why I brought single target damage, this is why we brought Theo, we're not using Lucian or anything like that, we're not using AoE damage, you gotta be really careful. Now if you're going to be using Dots, you're going to be even more careful, okay? Kraka's revivability basically works. She revives an ally with 30% HP, but they're able to use any and all of their skills, including passives, with cooldown time, which is exactly what the Dark Infernos have. They have a passive that reflects damage when they die, so it, it inflicts a certain amount of damage when they die, and they will do that damage on the monster that deals the finishing blow, but this does not apply to bombs, or damage over time dots. So what we want to do is apply those dots or the bombs onto those monsters to kill them and then that way it will not and then that way it will not reflect on our monsters. But this way that I'm doing is just more direct. We're gonna be very, very, very careful not to kill those infernos and we're just gonna try to keep them stun locked and slow down. So we're gonna try to apply our stun. We did not get them so let's be careful, make sure that Veramos gets that removal when they apply the AoE defense break and let's hope this all works. So that's all I've got for you guys for Trial of Ascension Normal. That's every boss from 50 up to 90. If you guys are having trouble on floor 100, then I highly suggest you go check out my guide for that. It will be at the end of this video. There will be a link to it. You just click on the video and it will be right there. If you're having trouble on any of the other stages, I highly recommend you take a look at the stage and you can just post a comment down below. It's a little bit hard to do guides on every single floor. So just go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll just give you a team suggestion. Just make sure you tell me which stage it is, what's on that stage, and then which monsters you're trying to use. And if you're stuck on any stages below floor 50, then I highly suggest you start upgrading your runes. You're probably not ready for TOA normal yet. It does not matter the monsters for Trial of Ascension normal so much. It's mostly on your runes. I'm able to use the exact same team for most of these floors, but the concepts can be different, so just pay attention to those. If this guide helped you, make sure you guys leave a like. I really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot, and hopefully you guys are ready for the Trial of Ascension reset. I surely am. I am getting close to Trial of Ascension 100 hard mode. I know, it's crazy. I'm really, really, really close to beating Trial of Ascension hard mode, and when I do that, I will make sure to upload the video of that. It is very tough. I don't know if I'll be able to complete it in, the, in this next four days, but I really hope I do. I'm going to be doing nothing but Trial of Ascension for these next four days, so I'm going to try to get a Farmer Phil uh, video out 
but just keep in mind I'm really trying to get through this Child Ascension hard mode 100. Right now I'm on I think floor 86 but from 81 to 99 it is pretty much easy. It's only stage 80 and then stage 100 that's actually rather difficult and I got through the most difficult stages so far. So hopefully we can make it up to floor 100 in time and complete that. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, hope it helped you out, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace out guys. I know, I know, I know, I really need to ruin my almond, but it's just I don't have it. So if you have two healers, definitely run double healer because he can do some serious damage if you don't get Bella Dion's heal off fast enough. But uh, pretty simple, you know, uh, 